I'm not gonna lie. When I agreed to work at Popeye's Fried Chicken, I was aware of what I was getting into. I know the place doesn't have the best reputation, but I needed a job. Besides, no job is perfect. But if I had known that what I was going to experience at that place, I would have kept looking for a job. Let me give you a little context first. It all started when overnight, a man started coming in every night before the place closed. His appearance was horrendous. He looked like a homeless man. The man always did the same thing. He would arrive, order a chicken sandwich, and go to the bathroom to eat it. Although he was polite and seemed totally harmless, we were all afraid to say anything to him. He was constantly scratching himself, talking at the table with people who weren't there. His huge eye was shaking almost as much as his body. He didn't seem like a bad person, but we were all afraid that if we said anything to him, the man would explode in anger and attack us. The day it all happened, the usual routine had happened. The homeless man had ordered his chicken sandwich and was waiting for it to be delivered. We all avoided going to the bathroom when this happened, but that day I couldn't help it. I was sick to my stomach and I couldn't wait another second for that man to go into the bathroom, eat his food, and come out. I locked myself in the farthest bathroom cubicle. I tried to hurry as fast as I could, but before I could get up, the bathroom door opened and the man came in. He began to inspect the bathroom, choosing where to go in to eat. He tried to enter my door, but noticed that it was closed. After that, there was an awkward silence. What was he doing? <laughs> Sir, what are you doing? The stall's occupied. Oh, I'm sorry, young man. I wanted to see why this cubicle wasn't available. Without any answer from me, the man went to the first cubicle where he always used to go. From mine, I could hear him savagely eating the chicken sandwich. The noises made me very nervous. He was devouring it without contemplation, and he didn't drink anything even for a second after eating. I took advantage of the situation to pull up my pants and leave the cubicle quickly, but as soon as the man heard my door open, he stopped eating. I walked slowly to leave. I didn't want to make him leave his cubicle. I didn't want to meet him face to face. I couldn't shake this strange feeling that something was wrong, that this man was dangerous and might possibly do something to me. When I reached the door, it opened violently and the homeless man came out. The man was in his underwear. He had taken off all his clothes when he entered the stall. He had a piece of trash which he threw out as soon as he opened the door. As soon as he came out, he made his intentions clear. He looked me straight in the eye. We both stared at each other uncomfortably without saying anything, watching each other. He wasn't looking at me in a threatening way. He didn't seem to want to hurt me, but something in his eyes was wrong. His look was desperate, hurt, and even sad, but that didn't make him any less dangerous. After all, he has two heads above me. Sir, I'm sorry to bother you, but I think I need your help. What are you doing without clothes? You know you can't eat in here, right? Yes, I I'm really sorry. But you see, I need to. It's the only way I can take off my clothes. A and why... Why do you want to take off your clothes? Well, this is the only way I can scrap myself while I eat and get all these damn cockroaches out of my body. But there's nothing on your skin. Are you blind too? Can't you see me? Don't you see all these cockroaches all over my body? If I take them off, they just come back. They just keep going on and on, eating all my skin. They're gonna eat me alive. It's okay, sir. I apologize. I, I can see them better now. I'm without my glasses. I'll, I'll go get help, okay? I'll come soon with someone who will get all the cockroaches off. Okay. Thank you. Sir, what are you doing? Wait, I need your help. I was just going to look for- No! I need you to help! It has been so long! It has been so long! I need you to scratch me! I need you to scratch me a lot! Sir, please let go! Help! Someone help me! Please scratch me! Otherwise the cockroaches won't go away! Itchy, itchy, itchy! The situation was interrupted when the two security guards entered the restroom along with some other guys, pushing the two of us out of the door. When we fell, I got up as quickly as I could, but the man was still on the floor, rolling around as if he was on fire. 
The police soon arrived and took the man away. I didn't report him or press any charges against him as he really didn't have any bad intentions towards me. Shortly afterward, I found out that the man was locked up in a psychiatric hospital as he had schizophrenia. I was told that just as he said, the man thought his body was full of hungry cockroaches that were brutally biting him all the time. After that, we never saw him again. But when I see a cockroach, I think of him, how it would feel to be in his skin, and how, in his desperation, he could have done something to me if I wasn't saved. This story was inspired by a serial killer named Randall Saito, who was a psychiatric patient at State Hospital. In July of 1979, he killed a 29-year-old random woman named Sandra Yamashiro at Ala Moana Center. Her body stabbed and shot was found in her car. Two years later, Randall was acquitted by reason of insanity. Saito escaped State Hospital in 2017 by taking a cab, using a fake ID, and later was arrested in California. It was a day I will never forget. I returned from school late in the evening, and after watching movies for a while, I got a little peckish. Luckily, a new Popeye's chicken fast food restaurant just opened down the street, so I decided to go order some food. It was dark by the time I arrived, and as soon as I stepped in, I noticed there weren't any customers at the restaurant. Strangely enough, there weren't any workers around either. Just a weird-looking guy standing behind the counter. Now, I'm not the type to fixate on looks, but I immediately knew something was off about this guy. His body was extremely skinny, like he was sick or severely malnourished. He had big, bulging eyes and a scruffy beard. Even more unsettling was that he had scabs and wounds all over his body. Some were bandaged, while others were left to fester. I couldn't fathom how in the world they would let someone like that take food orders. Um, excuse me? Can I get some service, please? Uh, for crying out loud, would you say something? I yelled at the top of my voice. His tired, bloodshot eyes swiveled toward me. He stared at me with a face full of rage, as though I had disturbed something important he was doing. If looks could kill, I would have already been dead by then. Welcome to Popeye's famous fried chicken. May I take your order? He moaned lifelessly. I couldn't help but noticing how jagged and yellowish his teeth were. I ordered four three spicy chicken wings with lots of ketchup and a Diet Coke. He requested for my name. I was hesitant, but since it was part of the order, I gave it to him. Jennifer. I said. Coming right up, Jennifer. I just know you're gonna love it. He smiled ghoulishly and then retreated into the kitchen. I knew something was wrong. I could feel it in my gut. More so, I could also smell something putrid coming from the closet in the kitchen. The stench was so strong it made me nauseous. I had to know what was going on back there. So, I quietly snuck into the kitchen and eavesdropped on him. I noticed him preparing the chicken I ordered, but nothing could have prepared me for what happened next. He vomited something disgusting into the ketchup bottle, shook it, and then spread it all over the chicken he was about to serve me. I was so sickened I almost threw up in my mouth. Suddenly, his head snapped towards me. You're not supposed to be in here! I'm almost done with your order! He hissed. Cold sweat ran down the back of my neck. Um, actually, I changed my mind. I don't want the order anymore. I don't think so. You're gonna eat your chicken, and you're going to enjoy it. After all, everyone loves the chicken from Popeyes. Then, he grabbed a kitchen knife off the counter and I immediately made a run for it. He sprinted after me with the knife in his left hand and a box of chicken in his right. Come back here and eat your chicken! He yelled at the top of his voice. I sprang through the restaurant door and into the parking lot. Despite being so gangly, he was incredibly fast, 
In fact, he was matching me stride for stride. His long, scrawny arms were only a few inches away from my head, but as we ran into the road, a truck sped out of nowhere and rammed through him before he could reach me. With adrenaline pumping hard through my veins, I kept running. I didn't even bother to look back. After a few minutes, I arrived at my house. I bolted through the door and locked it behind me. My mom had gone away on a business trip that day. I tried calling her, but the line wasn't going through. Dear God, what am I going to do? What if he's still alive? What if he follows me home? I locked all the doors and windows. Then I took a baseball bat and waited at the front door. I waited till midnight, but he never showed up. After a while, I lay down on the floor close to the door, and I slept off. Then suddenly, around 2 a.m. in the morning, I was awakened by the sound of dogs barking in the streets. Then, the handle of my front door began to shake violently. The door jerked and trembled so much I thought it was going to break down at any minute. It was him. It could only be him. Jennifer, your order is ready. Open the door. Jennifer, Jennifer. He hissed as he pounded on my door. Immediately, I took the phone and called the police. Come quickly. There's a crazy guy at my house and he's got a knife. Yes, 113 Woodrow Street. Please, hurry. While the call was going on, he started hacking at my door with the kitchen knife. My heart raced as I saw the knife slide in and out of the frail wooden door. Leave me alone! I cried, but that didn't stop him. Suddenly, I heard the sounds of police sirens from a distance, and the door stopped moving. I heaved a sigh of relief. It was finally over. When I opened the door, the man was no longer there. All that was left was a box of Popeye's chicken with my name written on it. When the police arrived, we drove over to the restaurant. The man wasn't there anymore. However, when they checked the closet in the back, they found the dead body of one of the workers in the closet. He had multiple stab wounds on his chest. The management told the police that the man they were looking for was fired after he was caught adding bodily fluid to people's orders. Afterward, he was admitted into a mental asylum. Apparently, he broke out and came straight back to work. I'm just glad I had the good sense to check on him after placing the order. Needless to say, I haven't gone to my Popeye's Chicken restaurant ever since. Last winter, I started working part-time at a Popeye's near the highway. Things weren't too bad until they moved me to the night shift about a month into my time at the restaurant. The restaurant was busy during the day but got downright freaky at night. I didn't enjoy going to work much on winter nights, but I managed to push through it because the pay kept going up. Then, one night in January, I made a terrible mistake. I offered to close the Popeyes on my own after the night shift. Lizzie was supposed to help me. She's a blonde sweet girl who started around the same time I did, but she was feeling ill so I offered to handle closing solo. Once the last customers were gone, I began my closing process. I locked the doors. I turned off the main lights, then pulled out a Bluetooth speaker, placed it on the table in the dining room, and started to mop up while jamming to some classic rock. I wiped down all of the surfaces. I worked fast. We had an official policy to only ever close with two or more staff on site. The official reason was for safety and accountability, but as the minutes ticked by that night, I began to feel like someone was moving around the restaurant just out of my sight. I was about to start cleaning the bathrooms when I heard a commotion from the kitchen. Lizzie? I called out, holding up my mop for self-defense, I guess. There was a scraping sound followed by silence. I hopped over the counter, still holding onto the mop like it was a club. Something had knocked over a packet of flour lying on the kitchen counter. White flour spilled all over the floor. Boo! I yelped, turning back and saw a man standing inside the restaurant. I just about jumped out of my skin. The man looked like a creepier version of Popeye. Dirt clung heavily to his clothes and the pipe he was smoking on spread a foul smell all over the restaurant. I'm imagining this. I said out loud, clutching the mop so hard. The man took a step forward and stopped. Hey, are you here alone? I froze. Lizzie! I asked again, forgetting she had gone home a long time ago. 
No, sorry, not Lizzie. <laughs> Who? Who are you? I asked. He took another step forward and smiled. That was many things. Now, did you say you were alone, or did I imagine that? My mouth was dry. I was having a hard time speaking. Now he was standing in the middle of the restaurant, partially hunched over. His chin made his face look absurd, and he only had one eye open, but it was enough to give me a death stare. Do you know I only eat spinach? What? What? I took two steps back. He remained where he stood. I don't understand why they put this on me. I'm a vegan. I don't even like chicken. You meat eaters are cruel. It feels fun to silence a helpless bird, right? What are you talking about? Look, we're closed for the day. If you have any issues, come back tomorrow when the manager's here. Oh no! I don't think the manager will agree so easily. I need to leave him a message. <laughs> His words made absolutely no sense, but the more I heard him, the more I felt my skin crawl. What message? Dude, I'm telling you, you better leave or I'll- You got a face I would like to touch. Suddenly, he started running towards me at full speed. I screamed and started running too. <gasps> Maybe if I do what your manager does to those poor chickens, the world would realize. Maybe I should just give them a taste of their own medicine. <laughs> Go away! Help! Help! I got inside the restroom and locked the door before he could get in. His chilling threats continued from the other side of the door. Open up! Open up! It's Popeye the Sailor Man! My body was drenched in a cold sweat. I was panting in fear. What should I do? How do I get out of this alive? My phone wasn't with me and this place was in the middle of the highway. Very limited chances that someone would hear my screams. I'm strong to the finish, cause I eat my spinach, I'm Popeye the Sailor Man! <laughs> His voice started to change, and soon he was kicking the door hard. Don't try my patience, lady! The more you make me wait, the more damage I'll do to you! Open the darn door! Please! Just go away! Leave me alone! But he didn't. Soon the door started to give in. His kicks were so strong. I knew I wouldn't be safe for long and it was time to get out and run. I climbed up the bathroom vent and with great difficulty squeezed myself through it. I was already halfway from getting out through that small space when I heard the door break. So the little birdie tries to run. I began to move my body quickly. I was almost out when he grabbed my feet. His ironclad grasp gave me bruises. But thank god, I wore my heels that day. I poked his big eye with my other stiletto. Ah! My eye! My eye! And he let go of me. As soon as I made it onto the ground, I took my shoes off and started running towards my scooter parked in the driveway. Luckily, I always kept my keys in my jean pocket. It took me about five to seven seconds to start the engine, but it felt like hours in panic. When I was driving away at full speed, I saw the man coming out of the restaurant. He chased me, but I drove too fast. That was the last time I stepped foot in Popeyes. I quit the next morning, calling my manager to make sure that she knew it was my fault the place wasn't properly closed. I didn't want to get Lizzie in trouble, though I did beg her to find somewhere else to work. She promised she'd think about it. I don't leave my apartment much these days. I'm able to work from home and I get all of my food delivered. The rare times I step outside for a walk, well, I walk fast. Maybe it's my imagination, but sometimes I feel like something is out there looking for me just out of sight when I sleep, which is rare these days. I dream of that crazy Popeye man who called himself a true vegan and came to set an example for the non-vegetarian people by doing God knows what to me.